Hello, in this video, I'll take you from a complete beginner to a pro user of Google Anti-Gravity within minutes. I'll show you what matters and how you can quickly get started using Google Anti-Gravity IDE without wasting time. If you're looking for the most efficient way to learn Google Anti-Gravity without complicating it, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial that will show you how it works, the available options, and a practical example on how you can start building your dream project using Google Anti-Gravity. But just before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Joe. I create videos about AI models and AI coding tools on a daily basis. You can find me here on YouTube and on Medium. My current goal here is to get to 10k subscribers and i think you can help me in that journey hit that subscribe button to help us keep going now let's get started with how to use google and gravity ide I want to start by familiarizing you with the user interface of Google Anti-Gravity. It comes with two layouts, editor layout and the agent layout. To master Google Anti-Gravity, you need to understand how this user interface works. You will start with the editor layout, which comes with the default top bar menu, which includes the toggle menus on the extreme right. It also has the activity bar on the left and the agent panel on the right under the center we have the coding area. The editor layout, this is the first place you land once you open Google and Gravity IDE. It has the main menu at the top and you can see the menu items that include file, edit, selection, view, go, terminal, and help. And this menu will help you to navigate different options available on this editor. It's similar to what we have on VS Code, but at the far right you can open manager link that opens the agent manager we also have these two menus the first is the customization menu that allow you to customize your layout then we have the toggle menu the first is the toggle primary sidebar that opens the primary sidebar next we have the toggle panel to toggle the agent panel then we have this quick search icon that helps you to open files quickly Next, we have the open browser preview, a button that quickly allows you to launch the browser agent. Next is this gear settings icon that opens the editor settings panel, anti-gravity user settings, extensions, keyboard shortcuts, and an option to configure snippet as well as tasks. On the extreme right, we have the account avatar with a drop-down menu where you can sign out, change the IDE theme, open quick settings, view docs, among other account settings. Now let's look at the activity bar. The activity bar is located on the extreme left and by default has four major icons. The first icon is the explore which helps you to quickly view your files or open the project. Then we have the search to quickly search through your project for variables, supports, functions or anything else and it, it also comes with the repress option to help you in code refactoring. Next we have the source control where you can control the versioning, cloning a repo, updating commits, pushing to remote repo among other versioning functions. Finally we have this extension which allow you to install additional extension like VS Code that help you to quickly improve your coding workflow. For example I can install my favorite database client or maybe Thunder client for testing my API code. You'll note that these are the same extensions that are available on VS Code. Moving the activity bar is easy. You start by right clicking and selecting the option. The option is activity bar position, which has values such as top, bottom, hidden, and default. And you can also move it from left to right. For me, I like to leave it as default since it's similar to my VS Code layout, which I've used for years. The coding area. This is an area that is between the activity bar on the left and the agent panel on the right. Here is where you code and this is where most of the code is going to be displayed and it's also the starting point of your coding since it has three buttons. The first button is open folder that opens a new folder similar to the option you find under file menu. The next is the open agent manager that lets you to switch between editor layout and the agent layout. The other button is clone repository that helps you to clone a remote repo from git or other places below the buttons you can see their workspaces and your workspaces most recent workspaces are going to be listed here now let's look at the agent panel the agent panel is located in the extreme right and you can toggle it using the top toggle menu or the shortcut control plus alt plus b when open for the first time, you will see at the center, it has this prompt input box that has different options to help you create your coding prompts. You type in your prompts in the prompt input box and on this 
first plus icon, it allows to add additional context to your prompt. Additional context can be an image or you can use an art symbol to include files to improve your current context. Next, we have the modes. Google Anti-Gravity comes in two modes, the planning mode and the fast mode. The planning mode allows you to let the agent plan before executing the task and it can do deep research, handle complex and collaborative tasks. This fast mode is used to execute tasks directly and it's ideal for simple tasks that need to be completed fast. Next is the model selection dropdown that supports up to five models that include Gemini Pro High and Gemini Pro Low, Cloud Sonnet 4.5, Cloud Sonnet 4.5, Thinking, and GPT OSS 120B Medium. When you're coding, you can start with Gemini Pro Low version for lighter tasks and move to the higher version for more complex tasks to save on your tokens. You can also expect to have more models here in the future or this IDE to support custom API keys. Next, we have additional options that are within the agent panel. At the top of the agent panel, we have the drop-down menu with additional options that include customizations. If you click on customization, you will see you can define rules that are written in the Gemini.md file. Once you click on global, it opens up the Gemini.md file where you can write rules such as for all my JS projects use TypeScript. You can also see these global anti-gravity files example by clicking this information icon. Another thing you can do under advanced customization is define workspace rules that apply to a specific workspace. The next is the workflows. You can create workflow using this option. Once you click on it, you can input the name like debug memory leak, but before creating, you need to have an active workspace that should be associated with this workflow. When you're coding, to trigger this, you simply type slash in the agent mode and this workflow will be triggered. The next option is the MCP servers. Under the same menu in the agent panel, you can set up the MCP servers. Search for the MCP server that you'd like to install. As an example, GitHub MCP. Use the install button to simply install the MCP servers. Managing installed MCP servers should not be difficult. You click on this link, manage MCP servers, and the link will open a list of the installed MCP servers. You can also click on this link, view raw config files to see the raw mcp config.json file. These are the configurations of the MCP servers already installed, and you can add your own custom configuration in here. Back to the agent panel, there are these two icons at the top right. The plus icon allows you to create a new conversation and the next icon allows you to see previous conversation. Now that we have covered the editor layout, let's look at the agent layout. There are two ways to open the agent layout. First, from the main coding area where you click this open agent manager button or you can click at this link at the top of the editor layout, open agent manager. It opens another window, which is our agent manager. The right side of the agent manager is similar to the agent panel on the editor layout, but has a few additions. One is this view inbox link that opens the inbox where you have a collection of agents charts. Think of this as a collection of your previous agent's conversation within a specific workspace. You can also access the same inbox from the top left inbox menu, which by default has a number depicting the first conversation with the agent. Initially, this was confusing for me, but this does not mean you have a notification. It simply means your first agent conversation is ready. The other option is the open editor link, which is an easy way to jump back into the editor layout. Then we have playground link, which is an independent workspace for quick prototypes before you move to the main dedicated projects workspace. You can toggle the agent sidebar using this icon. The start conversation link starts a new conversation within the workspace, while the open workspace with a plus sign on this workspace section opens the panel to create a new workspace or view existing workspaces. The playground sets the workspace as the playground once you click on it. At the bottom, we have the knowledge link that opens your project knowledge base. And this is created as you build your project and it's a great way to document your project. Next, we have the browser link that is a quick link to open your browser sub agent. Then we have the settings links that opens the agent settings links page it's similar to the top bar gear icon. Once you click on this gear icon, you're presented with these agent settings. Here you can set the different kind of configurations for your agents. By default, we have this set to request review, but I like it to be agent decides. Then this is the terminal execution commands. By default, it's off. I usually set it to auto. Then you can add more configuration to allow your terminal commands. And for the file access, you need to be very careful with these 
because once you turn on this one, it's going to allow your agents to write or to edit files outside your workspace, which is something that should not be allowed. These other settings, you can just leave them as they are. And for the browser settings, the most important setting is open allowed list file, which allow you to add specific URLs that are allowed. As an example, you can see this has been listed here as one of the allowed browser list for your agents. You can add other links here, but you need to confirm if that is the right kind of link that should be added to the allow list. The other settings are just basic editor settings like these settings, and you're not going to be making any changes here. As well as these other browser settings, you can just leave them as they are. This is where you check out your account details. That is a quick overview of the agent settings. I'm now inside this agent layout. I created this workspace, how to use anti-gravity. I have my prompt inside here. The prompt is just a simple prompt to create a full stack app with a backend and a front end. I'll select the mode to be planning. This is a complex task and I want it to use the planning mode. Then I'll pick the low version first to see where this gets. Then I just click on send the prompt. It begins by thinking through the process and generating the plan for this project. The agent now has already planned all the tasks. Now we are in the implementation plan. We have all the goal of the projects proposed. You can see everything that we need to make this project work. I'm going to accept to begin implementing this project. It begins creating the files that we need and I've set everything to auto so that it can automatically keep creating the files until this is completed. Under review changes here, I can follow to see the changes that are going to be made as the files come through. The files have started coming through. We can see the requirements.txt file has been generated and we're going to be just observing what happens and accepting the commands. It's currently creating the environment folder and it's running in the terminal. You can open the terminal by clicking here to see what's happening inside the terminal. To follow through the project as it's built, I'm using this task list that is updated like for now we've already set up the project create the project directory has been completed we are currently setting up the pedantic uh, schemas on this file then we go to api endpoints then go to the front end towards the completion so this task list allow you to follow through the project so that you can see where you are you can use this button to comment on this line or to suggest changes for your agent to work on them as i mentioned earlier the review changes file allow you to check which changes have been made in each of the file. Like in this case, we can see there are 22 changes on this models.py file and these files keep coming through. You can make changes here, make comments on the changes that you'd like the agent to work on. We are now coming towards the end of the project. It has already built the front end. It's now about to start running the backend server. To run the server, I'm going to just click on accept and as it's running the server. You can see the server has opened on this port. I have given it a prompt to open the browser sub agent and start testing. It's clicking and following through the testing process. Back here, you can see it's going to render the playback once it has completed the entire testing where you can view how the test was. The prompt was, can you open the browser sub agent and start testing? The application has been completed. The build is complete and it's now currently testing. This is the final front end of what we just created, a complete personal finance tracker app. You can see the tasks that were listed at the beginning of the project began with project setup. Then we went to backend implementation with specific tasks for the backend, including API for the endpoints, the business logic. Then we went to front-end development. We went to the testing, both the backend and the API endpoints. Once you check out this workspace, you can tell what's happening in the project by using this toggle here. It gives you a brief overview of what happened. This is the implementation plan. Click on this, it gives you this layout for the tasks. Then this walkthrough gives you the testing. This is an example of a media artifact that shows you how the agent has tested different kinds of features on your app. Here, it shows you the files that have been changed. You can keep prompting back and forth to improve the app to ensure you get to what you want in terms of your project build. I hope up to this point, you can now get started with Google Anti-Gravity IDE with ease. If you have any questions, drop a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, that has been how to use Google Anti-Gravity IDE. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe. One like, one subscribe gives me one more step forward to bringing you great content. Thank you and I appreciate.